In a brief stint on the stand at the Senzo Meiwa trial, former police officer and digital and electronic forensic specialist Alphys Moshwana has told the High Court in Pretoria that he did not check whether data was deleted on Kelly Kumalo's cell phone. Mushwana has told the court that a day after the 27th of October 2017 murder of the former Bafana, Bafana goalkeeper, he received six cell phones so that the people who were in the house before uh, two intruders came in and demanded cell phones and money. The former cop says he was tasked with downloading data from both the phones and the SIM cards by Colonel Andre Nietling, which he did on the same day and handed over the information before he could even go through the content. Previously, Colonel Lamberto Stein, a cell phone expert and investigating officer who later received the data from Brigadier Bongani Genida, told the court that his analysis revealed that data on Kelly's phone was deleted moments after 1 a.m. on the 27th of October a few hours after Mayua had been shot and killed. Well, for a wrap of what happened today in the Senzo Mayua murder trial, uh, let's uh, speak to our reporter now, Sipo Kikana, who joins us now. Sipo, thank you so much for your time. Of course, uh, uh, this, uh, the court today wrapped up quite fairly sh um, you know, quickly at 1, a and at 1 p.m. Just talk to us about what transpired today, particularly with this latest witness. Yes, uh, Unati, um, as you say, it was a very short day in court with two cell phone data downloaders coming in to give testimony uh, on their job, on how they went about downloading the information that was uh, previously in court uh, presented uh, by um, cell phone analysts, uh, that is Lambeth Stain and, um, and Mabasa. You will remember that uh, here we're talking about Mr. Alphas Mushwan as well pointed out and uh, the next uh, witness that was then called is Sergeant Petrus Ngosi. Uh, Mushwana, you remember that uh, he, he is now the man that we know today that he downloaded the information that uh, was presented to court by Kennel Lambertus Stain. Uh, you remember that Stain previously came to court to say that uh, according to an analysis, there seems to have been communication and links between the people who were in the house, and that is uh, more specifically a, uh, a cell phone that was registered under the name of, uh, of um, accused number five that was being used, in fact, he says, that was being used by uh, accused number five, Soko Shentuli. That, that cell phone had been in contact with a cell phone that was registered under the name of Kelly Kumalo. Uh, this uh, stain was actually called in at that point, if you remember, uh, just to give an indication of what the data analysis that he had uh, gone through, what it was telling him. Uh, him about uh, about this case and that information we have, uh, we understand today that it was uh, downloaded by Elfas Mushwana who gave a very brief testimony today um, and also faced a very brief cross examination. Uh, you remember some of the things that staying uh, presented in court were some of the SMSs uh, that does. Uh, Kim Kumalo sent to her younger sister, Zandile Kumalo, talking about her frustration uh, about the relationship that she had with Senzo Mihiwa at the time. All those things became uh, very topical in court at that point in time. And you remember that it was Spain's testimony as well that cell phone data on Kelly Kumalo's phone was deleted just a couple of hours after Senzo was shot and killed, in fact, just after 1 a.m. So, uh, so today we, we, we just got to understand, um, we, we got to see the man who, who, who was behind the downloading of that, um, that data, which was then analyzed by, um, which was then analyzed by kind of Lambert State. And the next witness after that was uh, Sergeant uh, Petrus Gossi. Uh, and uh, Sergeant Petrus Ngosi, uh, you remember, it, this one is a very interesting one. This is the man that um, downloaded data from a cell phone that was found in the possession of uh, uh, accused number three, Toby Silmove. And, and he is very, very key to this. Um, he is very, very key to this case. This is the man uh, from whose cell phone uh, they found a list of pictures, a, a, a compilation of pictures of a man with dreadlocks 
um, we who uh, advocate Charles Mason agreed in court that the person that we were looking at in court who had dreadlocks was in fact accused number three. And you remember that uh, according to the witnesses, the people who were in the house on that evening who came in and uh, allegedly demanded cell phones and money, we understand that the first intruder that came in wielding a a firearm had dreadlocks. He was shot. And he seems from that perspective perhaps to to fit the description of accused three. Even though I must mention today, uh, accused three has not been pointed out by any of the people who were in the, in the house that evening as the person who had come into the house and demanded cell phones. The closest we got to that point was when Kelly, uh, Zandi Lukuma during her testimony in court said, um, after, and this is, was after pointing out accused two, uh, Bongani Danzi as the taller intruder who was wearing a hood. She said in court, in as far as the intruder with uh, the dreadlocks who was, uh, who, who was carrying a firearm is concerned, there is a man that I, I see among the five, but I cannot say exactly who it is. It is just a suspicion. I am not sure who that man is. The only man that I am sure that was in that house is accused the number number two, Bongani Ndanzi. And this is the man who was also pointed out by Tumelo Madala, who concluded his evidence in court yesterday. So basically today it was uh, a day where those data downloaders came in just to uh, present their case and explain to court how they went about downloading that data from those cell phones. Uh, but what you can see now, uh, Unati, building up, is the state is, is those uh, moving in on accused number three. So as 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 um, uh, court agent uh, just uh, at about lunchtime today, uh, we 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 got to be told that on Monday a new witness is going to be called in. And uh, what we understand it is witnesses uh, from the police force from the police service who are going to be called in and also to testify on uh, what they found in relation to accused number three. You will remember that among the pictures that were found in his phone uh, when he was arrested in 2015, some of those pictures included uh, a collection of gun pictures uh, named Ishia Bazali and one of them named the King was then linked, that, 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 um, that firearm was then linked to a different murder, which he is currently serving prison sentence for. And uh, we understand also that there is a possibility that it is the very same firearm that could have been used on the night of the 26th of October 2014, when the former of Ketain was shot and killed. So we will be um, expecting more uh, revelations with regard to accused number three and the cell phone data that was downloaded from his cell phone when court resumes on Monday with a new uh, witness on the stand. All right, Sipo, thank you so much uh, for that very interesting development. Indeed, of course, the case does continue on Monday. Very much today's court case focused primarily on mobile devices.